I hate to break the fishing news up here, Amchuk, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the Real Life Podcast. We just traded a migraine in for, like, an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. 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 Yep. All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get uh. today. Welcome into episode 167 of the Real Life Podcast, episode 5 or 6 of uh, doing this bad boy in isolation mode. Everybody is here. Everybody is on FaceTime. Before we get going, I just need to give some love to our title sponsor, Japa Machinery, who is doing their best during this tough time and wants everyone listening to the podcast, all 13 or maybe 14 of you, maybe we started to grow. They want all of you to be safe and be well. We're going to get through this together, and we're going to get through this by doing Real Life Podcasts. Bagged Milk. Wanye Chalmers, Jay's video is cutting in and out, but he is here. Uh, thank, thanks for joining us, boys. Good day How to you, sir. It, it is all good. We got a few things to talk about today. Uh, we're going to give our thoughts on the Tiger King, at least the four of us who have now watched it, not throwing shade at anyone. Um, but before we do, how's the Nation Beer launch going? Uh, amazing, actually. We got the word from our friends at Dog Island that it's going to be canned and ready to, to to pick up tomorrow morning. So we launched a pre-sale this weekend, and yeah, the uh, the response so far has been crazy. So me and uh, sales guy Jared are going to be driving around the city like crazy this week, making all these deliveries. Uh, now, are all the orders that you got in it? Uh, so we capped it. To Edmonton and area, so like the surrounding, like St. Albert, Sherwood Park, Leduc, Spruce, Stony, Beaumont, uh, and Fort Sask. So we capped it, so it's still a giant area. Yeah. So we're gonna have to figure out how we uh, we have to become uh, delivery people and figure out how to triage orders and all that fun stuff. But yeah, overwhelming uh, start. So yeah, super pumped. Can't wait uh, that the uh, Jared had a chance to test it. Says it's crushable. It's, it's tasty, so I can't wait to get my hands on some. And next episode, hopefully, uh, I'll have some for all you guys, and we can crack one and uh, enjoy one for the for the podcast. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm looking yeah, forward to the... If you're delivering beer during a pandemic, you're allowed to drink and drive, right? Legally? <laughs> like we're well, if no one's on the road... Car, right? The Real Life Podcast does not endorse drinking and driving. Yeah, no, no, no it doesn't nation beer. So is this like the second coming of it? Because you guys used to have Nation Beer. Is this like a oh, different like the ninth direction? coming of it? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's it's legitimately the second coming of it. So we uh, we we had it during the playoff run of sixteen seventeen, and uh, just uh, and it, it sold like crazy. But we had supply issues, uh, yeah. so we kind of just put it on pause until we could find a really strong uh, partner who kind of understood the potential of what nation beer could be uh and the guys at dog island are just super good dudes they're based out in slave lake and they've got the full operation there they can can they can label they can brew so it's all done in one on one house so now we know that if we need more made they can make it quickly and they're super excited because they've been following the nation for like eight years each of them so uh, it's it's been a great partnership so far. Uh, I'm I'm ripping up to uh, Slave Lake tomorrow to pick up all the the beer for delivery for this week. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's weird. It's weird, but you know what? I'm drinking lots of beer right now, so I may as well be drinking Nation beer. If you got to get drunk while driving, drink Nation beer. That's a well, real ad. That's a real <laughs> ad. On the side of the can, we cleverly said it's the internet in the can. Drink while driving. I insist. That's what I said. That's a Wanye Gretzen door. Yeah, you can take that to the Supreme Court and write it on the Constitution. I'm gonna the have first to put cans, you guys. Go ahead. I'm gonna have to put so many legal things in this podcast <laughs> saying that we do not actually endorse <laughs> drinking and driving. We've suspended <laughs> laws, your Chuck. It's free fall. You're out of your mind. This isolation is doing some weird shit to you, buddy. No, I just think that now in this, I, I think that people are going to become a lot less concerned about being offended about shit now. For real. Yeah. yeah. For real, man. Like, if you're listening to this podcast right now and you actually think I want people to drive drunk, in 90 days, you're soft right now. And in 90 days, you're going to be hard. Uh, that's <laughs> true. True, true, true. Uh, the first Nation beers that you guys had, did you guys 
Didn't you, like, get them canned in just regular aluminum cans? And then they had no labels, no nothing, and you guys had to physically put a sticker on each what one What are of them? you, the fucking label police, Chalmers? I'm just saying, this is, a huge, this, is a huge, this is a huge step up. These cans are fucking sick, and they're, like, straight up, like... Well, no, no, they're, them, right? they're, they're the blank aluminums with, with the, where they slap on the big label on them. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Did, who put the labels on the very first ones that you ever did? They did. Uh, they did. They, there's, like, oh. a company... There's like a mobile company that goes around and does all this for for small breweries, but the guys at Dog Island have everything in house. Which no, no, that's what sick. I mean. The fir- these ones are amazing. The first ones that you guys had, they were ghetto. Let's be serious. No, they're okay. They did they 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 they, they were good enough, but now but now they're great. They were they, great they, because you drank them. You drank them during playoffs, so I thought they were great too. Yeah, they are and now all. Now we got pandemic beers. We drink them during a pandemic, dreaming of us being in the playoffs. Do you guys? Do you guys know what I've noticed? Like online sales are going to be uh, very good for you guys, I can imagine, because like since I'm not doing anything, and uh, all we really have is like our core set of bills that we have at our house, and I'm not spending any money. And with a, I like am looking for stuff to buy online. Like Amazon must be cleaning up right now because. Fuck, I'm like stir crazy, and the only thing that makes me feel like I'm not just stuck in my house is, I don't know, like purchasing stuff and having it delivered. And I can imagine well, other people are feeling that way or no? Well, maybe. Like, uh, it, yeah, we always have to be mindful of people being budget conscious right now because we don't know what the next few months are going to be. So I know I'm a little bit more particular outside of the drunken Peloton purchase. I'm, le- <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm only purchasing essentials right now, which in my life, involved buying beer at a decent rate yeah like i'm not splurging on shit that i do not need i'm just saying like i'm looking for stuff online that i need anyways and i'm preferring to buy it and get deliveries i don't know it's like some little form of excitement that i get in my day oh gotcha well what it's it's retail therapy so are we gonna do this tiger king thing or what are we gonna right off the top of the episode here you guys want to dig into tiger king Fuck man, what like so? Everybody watched it except for Wanye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't draw. I was busy. I was outside doing stuff in really close quarters <laughs> with tons of people. It's I amazing. Licked, I licked some chick. I don't even know who it was because that's what's really happening in the street. You're so hardcore over this. You're like you're out and about. Wow. I'm trying to get. Have you ever you ever watch a horror movie and every time something happens, you go like ah, right? Yeah, really? Yeah, a little yeah. more manly, but not, yeah. Okay, well, that's why I'm trying to toughen myself up. I'm trying to, like, get ready. You know what I mean? I'm watching, like, only horror shows and shit. Yeah. Tiger anyway, King was Tyler, a bit of a... Sorry yeah. about the funny guy who had a tiger. Well, after you watched it, you guys, it was pretty safe to understand why, basically, in isolation in the month of March, well, the ending of March has been taken over by two things and one of them is tiger king you could and, you could safely see why now after you watched it huh and the other it's one's crazy. a tiger hammer and another one is a giant hammer on a yeah on a on an <laughs> i don't even know how to say it on a man on a man <laughs> yeah just super yeah. weird so what yeah do we think? Who's tiger king Okay, I was glad king. that I was glad that Tiger King came out because I'm a Big Brother Canada guy, and that just got canceled last week. And I'm also worried about Julie Chen Moonves not being able to do her thing this summer either. So I yeah, needed a, a distraction. Can I ask you a question about Big Brother Canada? Sure. I had heard that it was potentially shaping up to be one of the worst seasons ever. Oh, buddy, it was, it was a gong show. It was an absolute due, gong show due to the fact that the first of the first four people, like only one of them, actually got evicted. The first four people that left the house, like what? Two people kicked out for saying bad shit. And one guy got self evicted. Then they voted yeah. someone out. Then two weeks in a row, people got thrown out. Then they came on and said it's canceled due to pandemic. Yeah, it was a gong show. So, what did the people say? They wouldn't you say. It. Like the Big Brother Canada did such a bad job of giving any insight into why they got kicked out. So. I so I went on Reddit to try and figure it out, mm-hmm. and I just assumed it was because they were being bags of shit. They were making people in the house feel uncomfortable. I'm still watching. I was watching the feed. Where you were like intimidating people. The, the first guy that got kicked out, the real swaggy guy. What was his name? Swaggy. Uh, 
No, he was a swaggy C clone. But anyways, he got booted Jamar. out because he made some. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the very first interview with him, five minutes of the show, and he said, what did he say all the time? You know what I'm saying? Or something yeah. like, what was it? You feel me? Uh, you feel me. You feel me. He, that is that the guy you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that guy was super annoying with the you feel me. So, yeah, like everybody's fucking self-evicting and getting caught. But, see, I think Big Brother USA, I think it could still go through, assuming you could get everybody there. Because if people got tested before they went into the house, they'd be sealed up. Right? Yeah, but It would just be yeah. a matter of uh, production. Now. Yeah. Like, how many people do they need on production? Lots. More, more than you'd think. I think Canadian Big Brother had like 150 people that worked under them. Oh my god! So then so that how, would be the problem, then, wouldn't it? Yeah, you couldn't have yeah. all that production crew working. But it's interesting to note that, like, in this weird time, like Stephen Colbert is doing his show off his iPad with no crew, and it's fine. Like, all you really need is Stephen Colbert. Yeah, true. yeah. I watched. I saw John Oliver do his show, the very first one after all this. And it was amazing how much of a difference that show made with no crowd and like no special effects, just the square box behind his head. Like it was weird. And he hasn't been on since. Really? Yeah. I watched no. it too. It was weird. It and was he weird. hasn't been on since? No, he hasn't been on since. Colbert is hilarious, man. He did his first show in the bathtub wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he's fucking funny. He did a whole show about while he was talking, he was trying to figure out how to fix his bike. He did like a whole monologue trying to figure out how to remove a bike tire and then like put it back on and stuff. It was hilarious. I mean, there are I some wonder, intriguing ways to come up with content now. If you're good, you're great. If you're not, you're fucked. Joe Rogan show the last few, unbelievable. Really? What, what, about, what about guys like Jimmy Fallon? Like, are they still on? They do like a monologue only. And then they like the guests and shit don't happen. So they're doing like maybe little like 10 minute monologues or something. You guys ever watch any of David Spade's show on the HBO? No, no, but I've been watching what he's been doing through his uh, Instagram feed. Yeah, so he's been interviewing people from Tiger uh, Tiger King. He's had yeah. he's oh, had John smart. Finley John Finley on right now, and John Finley nowadays uh, has a full set of teeth. He's totally gotten all of his dentistry done, and he's engaged to get married and like to a guy. No, to a girl. Like Not that, even yeah. the same one that he left there with and had the yeah. kid with, but another girl. Yeah. And then he had on uh, Saf, the girl who had, or the, sorry, yeah, the boy, yeah. the guy. Because Saf is a transgender. Did you know that? No. no. Yeah, so Saf is, a, is he uh, is a trans man. So, Can I just interject and say, as somebody sure. who has no idea what you're talking about, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Now continue. But the, guy, layers of, the layers of Tiger King, because they are <laughs> immense. This, this, this one it's, zookeeper it's, named Saf stuck his hand in uh, a cage and shunt of and was complacent and got it taken off by a tiger. And, Clean off. And after two days in the hospital, they said that it was going to be two years to reconstruct it or he could have it cut off right then and there. And he chose having it cut off and was back in the park five days after he had it cut off working. Yeah. And he was on David Spade. And was he, he and this other guy John Ranky, who's another is a person who has no legs, not from the park, but no. from a zip lining act. Hold on, hold yeah. on. There's a guy with no arm and a guy with no leg in the same show. Yes, yes. yeah. The he, guy, he's he's missing both legs. And so the tiger, probably, the tiger team basically just hires weirdos and oddballs that have gotten out of prison and shit and looking prison, for yeah. jobs. It's amazing. But, but those two are not weirdos. They're the two most redeeming people mm -hmm. in the whole show. It, John's the nicest around. guy. Oh, not John. Uh, Ranky. Yeah, the guy, the, the legless guy. I forgot his first name. Is it John? Yeah, John Ranky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was a great guy. But, but it, 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 in the, uh, sorry, Chalmers, in all of hilarious, uh, hilariousness, Wanye, this, this, um, Saf gets, uh, I guess, it, it gets his, his, his arm bit off by a tiger so there's a giant emergency at the farm so joe exotic who is someone we're going to tell you a little bit about more in detail here decides to do a wardrobe change and put on his sequin paramedic denim jacket Come to on. run out to run out and tend to the injury of this person Hold Joe on. Exotic, if not if not anything is an absolute showman in every single thing he does he makes it a uh, 
a, a show, and it's why he's riveting. It's why everybody wants to watch him, and it's why you can't take your eyes off him. He was a constant it was machine. Those, it was one of those shows where I didn't really know what I was getting into, and you guys told me that I had to watch it. So I'm like, okay, I'll throw an episode on. And then at the end of the first episode, I was like, holy shit, how many episodes are in this series? Because I'm going to do it all in one day. Yeah. So in my opinion, it was one too many. Yeah. I thought. I, I could have done with six. I think the yeah, last there's one a kind filler. of dragged. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you, when you had the seven episodes, the first three were just like comedy sketch after comedy sketch. And they just kept introducing people who were weirder and weirder and weirder. And then by episode four... Now all of a sudden it starts to turn into what you can sense is like coming of a tragedy, you know? And it's yeah. just like, it's like the ultimate story. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and that, it, it is Shakespearean in its, in its spin it really there. Is. Yeah, it really so is. Like, and like, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Keep going. Well, I was just going to, I mean, I was just going to start bringing up more of the characters so that, you know, we could like basically break some of them down. But Joe, well, Joe, in all of his, in all of his showmanship, he is. One of the least redeeming human beings. The things that he did bad, like by the end of it, it's human nature to start to feel bad for this person. Yeah. But when you go back through his Rolodex of the things he does, Wanye, he supplies two men with constant drugs, and <laughs> Joe Exotics is a gay man. Is a gay man, and yeah, he has he is. two. He has two husbands, neither of which are gay. What? <laughs> they, what? <laughs> neither of which are gay. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps them. He keeps them so hopped up, full of drugs, and buys them like guns and and like trucks and four wheelers, and they just they play around on his hundred acre property with his tigers, and that's their life, man. And they're, they're not. The and they're not allowed the to leave the property. What? They're not allowed to leave. They're not allowed to leave. So hold on, hold on. They're yeah. not gay, and they're not yeah. allowed to leave. And hundred percent straight dudes marry this guy. Yeah, because yes. they were having affairs with all the women on the at at the sanctuary or whatever it's called. There's the women zoo. in the sanctuary. This does sound good. This show well, could be the reason cameras were invented. Yeah, they were. There was a lot of women. I mean, because they were like you know, like this receptionist and the person that runs the gift shop and like you know, there's there's, there's a lot of people that work at this zoo. I mean, for as fucked up as Joe Exotic is, man, he built quite a business there, and like. You know, just he could get shit done. This is a guy who had people around him that he didn't pay very much, but they stayed with him because of yeah. some some sort of gravitational pull that he had. He manipulated him because he took a chance on him. He took people that couldn't that wouldn't have a chance to succeed in normal society and built them a world where they could live decent. And and he leveraged that to manipulate and kind of have them under his spell. That's what the, the only fuck way. is this show about? That's what? the only way Joe Exotic rolls. So to kind of give you a little bit of context here, Wanye. So Tiger King is about, it, it starts off about this guy, Joe Exotic. And Joe Exotic has like an exotic animal zoo. Yeah. He's got like 200 cats on his, on his property. And people right. come to see the cats? Yeah. Yep. But this guy documents everything he does. He always has a camera on him and he's, he, he's flamboyant. He's, he's, he's got charisma. He's just, but he's just, he's just, it's pivoted for a love from cats to a love for fame. So during all this, it introduces new characters that are in the game, like Bog Von Antel, Doc Antel, who's got a rival, you know, zoo Cult. in a diff- different state. Cult. They're not rivals. They're not rivals though, buddy. No, well, well sorry, sorry. But he was he, almost he, a mentor. He, he was yeah. almost a mentor. Sorry. And he kind of looks like Mr. Perfect. Oh, he does look like Mr. Perfect. He kind of looks like Mr. Perfect, and he <laughs> he runs he runs like a polygamy commune. What zoo? He's got like nine wives. Hold on, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He runs a polygamy colony zoo. Well, like he himself is a polygamist <laughs> with all of his his talent that that helps do the shows, and then he runs a zoo. So there's there's something that I have to say about this. Just so you know, get a zoo. Name, if you if you are into big cats. There's a very good chance that you are a sexual deviant because every single person <laughs> every one of them is. fucking show yeah. is. Yeah. Every single one of them. Not, yeah. not one of them is, doesn't have some sort of prior thing. And it's like, I think it's the correlation between like the power that you can hold over big cats and then the power that makes you feel to then possess it over humans. It's, yeah. It's, it's a super weird, like, I, you would. Like the that, manipulation that's part of is this insane. Show. You wouldn't just be like, you wouldn't just love the accents and the fact that this guy has no teeth and a, and a tattoo above his 
a non-gay man tattooed <laughs> on his pelvis, property of Joe Exotic. What? Right above his penis. A non-gay man. Above his penis. Well, no. Yeah. Right you're ab- fucking writing that on yourself, and you're not allowed to leave a farm, and you're married to a dude. At some point, you are no longer the straight man you remember. No, he's, right. you're a meth addict. Because he was just point, a meth out of his You're mind. a meth addict. So to kind of go back to the story here, Wanya, and I think maybe for the purpose of the show, it's kind of good that he hasn't seen it, so we can kind of explain it and then interject and provide some opinions on the uh, the yeah. characters. So in this, the, the the big enemy of Joe's is this lady named Carol Baskin, and she has wild animal rescue, big, big cat, cat rescue, rescue. Oh, big, big cat, cat rescue. rescue. So she's she's supposed to she's supposed to be the hero. That's saving all of these tigers from these zoos. Wanye, so to, just, tie, let me, to tie this in, Wanye, through Meow Post when we were doing that, Carol Baskin, we did content featuring stuff that they do at Big Cat Rescue. Yeah. Okay. For real? And, oh. Hello, hello, cats and kittens. Yeah. So no, and, she and as well that. is a content machine, and she's got an interesting story because she may or may not have murdered her husband to get all this money to then launch because they were into breeding. She didn't like breeding. So she started the rescue reserve. Husband went disappeared. We think she fed her, fed her to tigers, chopped them up and fed them to tigers. That's the alleged <laughs> storyline that is plausible. I don't so think she's, but, other... but she's the angel because she's saving all of these people, all these animals. But at the same time, she is making a ton of money off of it because she doesn't pay her staff. All her staff are volunteers. Okay, so let me let me let me let me lay this out for you. The difference between all these big cat farms like Doc Antles, this other guy Mario's, uh, uh, Joe Exotic, and you know, like the five of them, what they do is they they have shows, but they also have cub petting. So they breed the cats. They get cubs for about the first three months of a of a tiger's life. They are money makers because they can be used for cat for cub petting. After that, they just become an expense. They just run around a tra- they just they cost money in food. So the way that these places make the most amount of money is that they breed them, they sell the baby tigers to anybody that would want one, or they do cub petting. Now she does not do this. So what she says is that hers is a sanctuary because she doesn't do this and therefore she's helping save the tiger population. But every other thing that they all do is the exact same. They pay people to come in and look at the tigers. They put on shows for them. They keep them in cages. They don't pay their staff. Like she's, she does one little tiny thing different, and she's like an angel to people that want to save cats. She is also getting grants from the government, and whereas in the other ones look like they are pariahs, I guess you would say. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's weird because one little tiny difference, and she's a saint, and the rest of them are. You know, animal abuse. You know, yeah. like yeah. so. You know. Joe's mission in life, because he he has his own internet show. Obviously, you have to. Of course. Uh, and it, it, and he talks about nonstop how he wants to kill Carol Ass Baskin. Like <laughs> he's he's he, he he would have situations where it would be like this like dummy or blow up doll, and then he would take a gun and literally shoot it in the head. Like and he you, writes he writes songs and puts out music videos. Oh, and fucking right. He's a country bangers. music star. That's all bangers. good, but you better pray to God nothing happens to that lady. Or you so are let's, expect numero uno. So he's I'm going to blow you guys' minds right now. He, he is. is. That's, that's not, yeah, that is, yeah. That's a band called the Clinton Johnson Band. I found that out last night, actually, and I was I was yeah. pretty bummed out about it, to be honest. I thought they would disclose it in the show, and they didn't, because I, I, I could tell right from the first video Dude. that it was fake. There's two instances in the show. One, Travis's funeral, and number two, when he's in the truck driving and he's singing along to the Owen Funk. You can tell quite clearly that is not him singing. Yes. It's so, very, very fucking evident. He made a song, Wanye. What the hell are you guys talking he about? He made a song, Wanye, about Carol Baskin killing her husband and <laughs> feeding it to the Tigers and made a video about it. Well, where, he got, like where he got a lookalike of her. With this dish with a person's like it's not without a real person's head on it, being feeding this meat off of it to tigers. And then that really happened. Well, allegedly. No, allegedly in Joe's opinion. In Joe's opinion. And Joe, just so you know, he looks like a cross between Joe Dirt 
and he has got the voice uh, of like Ernest P. Whirl, but in like an exotic, flamboyant way. <laughs> what the fuck? It's a, it's a wild show, man. There's this a is lot the documentary to unpack. we need at this horrible time. Oh, it's got so many layers, dude. It gets more fucked up, and new people start showing we up. Even, we have not even discussed the part of where Carol Baskins all of a sudden wins a lawsuit over Joe because he's a fucking idiot, and he Joe's a fucking his, idiot, and he changes his zoo to like one name away from hers, so he can be right underneath her on the Google search, and yeah. she she sues him for trademark and wins a, a million dollars. Now. As the one, as the one reporter says, nobody expected for her to actually try to claim the million, but she did, and she tried hard. And this basically put Joe into a position where he couldn't afford the zoo anymore, and so he brought on an investor. Jeff the Lowe. Picture, Jeff fucking Lowe. And this guy rolls in with a huge white Hummer. He's like five foot four. He's bald, so he wears, you know, like Brett Michaels. Uh, the guy that wears the bandana with the cowboy hat, oh, he wears he wears a similar thing. He has an affliction jacket in every in every picture, and he's wearing true religion jeans in every picture. This guy is literally, if you looked up like the word douchebag in the dictionary, this guy's face would be there. He's the and most he, evil of them all. Yeah, but he's got a Ferrari. But what they didn't, what what Joe comes to find out is that he's a couple payments behind on his Ferrari and that he rented a mansion to show Joe how good life was in Vegas. Like this guy's as fake as a fucking $3 bill. And, and basically Joe just like falls in love with this guy. Cause now he sees a way of getting out of his million dollar problem that he has with Carol. <laughs> and, and then enter Chucky with a flat iron, my boy, James Garrison. Oh. Just, dude, it's so many fucking layers of the show. James all of a sudden becomes a federal informant against Joe. And <laughs> it's just, I don't even know, man. I don't even know. Oh, even it is it is just a story of manipulation because Joe Joe is dumb and makes a bunch of mistakes. And he all that Carol Baskin stuff he just did in the name of fame, but it incriminated him so badly, and everyone around him turned on him to protect themselves. And Joe is the big victim here, even though he did do a lot of bad things at the same time. But you end up feeling bad for him. But my question to all of you, except for Wanye. Yeah. Is if you were to say rank the evil people, like how would you rank? Um, uh, fuck Carol, Jeff, Joe, uh, Bogwan, Doc Antle. Like, how would you rank them on the evil chart? Well, my I list think is easy. Go ahead, Chalmers. Okay, I'll go first. My list is definitely Jeff is the most evil, and I don't like just just because of how. He tried to take advantage of Joe. Number two is Carol, but number three is Howard, man. Howard, Carol's new husband. Oh, yeah. He, he's a guarantee, the head man behind them getting government grants, going in and changing legislation. Like, he's he a is. mastermind of the smart degree. Like, he's the smartest person, I believe, in the show. But he's also, like, one of the physically weakest because he allows his wife to put a a, a collar, a dog, dog collar out. <laughs> and a leash. What? And, uh, and he's wearing leopard picture. print. <laughs> yeah, their wedding what picture. the fuck? And oh. government grants? Oh, he looks Man, like he got like, all my buzzwords. He looks yeah. like um, he Prince looks like Charles a had a baby with Orville Redenbacher. <laughs> yeah, he's a yeah. giant cock, is what he is. <laughs> oh, he's a giant yeah. cock. He, so yeah, yeah. So, so my, so my list, cock. my list would go, my list would go Jeff, Carol, Howard, and then Joe. And honestly, after that. There really isn't that like J- like James would be five, but after that, there's not many evil in that. I movie. I love that you brought up Howard because that whole time, he, yeah, he's a piece of shit too. What's oh yeah, cut? somebody who allows their wife to be banged by somebody else. <laughs> is that what? correct? Ben? I know. Yeah, I, I, correct. Yeah, I feel Carol. Thing? I feel Carol can hold Congress with anyone she wants, and Howard has no say in the matter. Oh my god, Howard You're watches. Chuck, what? Uh, yeah, your M check. What's your uh, ranking? Okay, well, you guys are like it, Chalmers. It, it, did you not have Joe Exotic in your ranking of evil? Yeah, he's number four. Oh, he's number four. Like, okay, to me, I it's hard to even rank them because Carol is a piece of shit who tugs at people's heartstrings, makes millions of dollars. I believe she had something to do with killing her husband or her first husband. 
So like she's 100%. just she's a fucked up kind of evil, manipulative, whatever. Then you have Joe who basically brings in young meth addicted men and like sexually abuses them for drugs, which is also like immensely and fucked up. And everyone's laughing when you hear this news. As somebody who doesn't when you break know, it down, Joe did so many bad things, but they make you like him. I did not like him at all, man. Like, can I? If I'm, I haven't, I haven't said anything in like almost 15 minutes here. I thought that I thought Tiger King was a little bit overhyped. Like, I didn't find a lot of drama in it. Like, from episode to episode, I wasn't like, oh, I need the next one. I was just kind of going about it because it was so, it was like a car crash. Like, it was just so fucked up. You didn't want to look away. But I I honestly thought the series could have been two episodes shorter. There was a lot of fluff in there. They probably could have just cut out. And, like, okay, so Joe Exotic is fucked up because of what he does with those guys. He basically drives the one guy to a point where he shoots himself in the head. Like, oh yeah, that's that one was of, an accident. But was it a fucking accident? <laughs> what? So, one yeah, one of his boyfriends <laughs> is starting to get like cabin fever, and this is you should we shouldn't joke with this. But anyway, yeah. he starts like the drug addiction and him being like trapped in this place started weighing on him. So there's video you don't see it because he's under the camera, but he walks into this office and he shoots himself in the head. That's not how it goes. He he's in the office. He's sitting down and like. The, the guy I like the most in the whole show is, is his campaign is, manager. Is his oh campaign yeah, manager. Joe so, ran for governor of Oklahoma and we president and finished, and finished third. Finished yeah. third. Yeah, impressive showing. Nineteen anyway, percent of the vote. So Anyways, I can see guy, why people guy, want to work for this guy for cheap, man. This is way more interesting than real life. So this guy Travis walked. He used to walk around with guns. He was always stoned, like to the point where he had no idea what he was doing. But he would always point guns at people. And that was just his thing. He was a big child. And so he pointed this gun at this guy and he was sitting in a chair across from him. And he was just like, and the guy's like, don't point the gun at me anymore, man. You can't do that. And what he says to him is, it's a Ruger. It doesn't even have a clip. And he puts it to his head and pulls the trigger. Made a mistake because it did have a bullet in it. And it shot him. Oh, really? It was a, it, Oh, yeah. what? That, oh, oh. That's all he said. He, it's not like he walked in there and was like, I'm going to kill myself and do it. He sat in a chair, fucked up out of his mind pretending to point the gun at people and then to show the guys that it would never actually shoot it, put it to his head and shot it and was wrong, unfortunately, because it did and he killed himself. You and know what Joe performed, right And now? Joe performed at his funeral. He did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, it was just mind-blowing. And and what I'm learning right now, Chalmers, is there's different sides to every story. And yeah. Two months hey, after nothing, his... Nothing's as straightforward as it would appear. Two months after his husband, who was like 25 years younger than him, blows his brains out... Joe has a new husband who's 30 years younger than him. Yes. And like, and like what I what I would describe as like the quarterback on the football team of senior year in high school. Looks yeah. good looking. Like the kid looks like a no, normal you're, like, you have bro. some very weird takes on the show. <laughs> okay, but well, why? And then he invited his deceased husband's mom to be in the wedding photos. So it so it, so for appearances, it makes Joe look good. That Dude, not, it not invisibly just, bought into the decision. Not only just the wedding photos. There was only four people at the wedding, and she was one of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> but she, but she, what what you can sense is that she was also being supplied meth. I think throughout most of the time okay. that her. Son you was say there. supplied meth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Joe was keeping her hopped up on meth too. So Joe, with this dude, this tiger guy with the money from his zoo, would give everyone meth. Yeah, yeah, they meth and it. weed, meth and weed. So sorry, Remchuk. What is your uh, what is your evil ranking? Okay, and I want to get to Doc Antle too because that guy is, I think, potentially even the most fucked up. He just didn't get yes. enough camera time. That guy was bringing in like seventeen and eighteen year old women marrying them and then not letting them leave and paying them like a hundred dollars a week for what was essentially 90 hours a week of labor. Like what the fuck was going on there? He had all these fun fact about doc. Fun fact about doc, uh, Antle, he supplied tigers for Britney Spears videos. I also read a report. He's also brought animals to Congress. It's all fucked up. And I also read a report that when he lived in Virginia, he, like, got caught up in this legal thing where he impregnated, like, a 14-year-old babysitter and had to, like, flee the town. Like, this guy oh. is, like, multiple layers of just super fucked up as well, and he kills tigers and shit. Like, And he kills tigers like crazy. Like crazy, man. You know what he's a, 
you know what he's a doctor of, Wanye? Um, um, doctor of? <laughs> Come on, I know you can guess if you think hard enough. <laughs> Tell me he's a proctologist. No, no. So, <laughs> mystical sciences. Ah! <laughs> So Doc so is on brand. Doc is all oh, fucked yeah. up as well. He's taking advantage of young women and like borderline brainwashing them. So I saw a good thing on Twitter that was like Carol Baskin is like a lawful evil where like she follows the rules, she plays the good guy, but inside she's doing it all to make her millions and she might have killed her husband. Uh, it, Joe Exotic is a chaotic evil where he's doing this all for, like, his own ego and stuff. And I don't even think Joe Exotic obviously knew how fucked up he was or how terrible the shit he was was doing. But he's fucked. And then Doc Antle, like, he is a fucking pedophile who should... They should all be in prison. And that's why at the end of the show, I kind of sat there and I was like, the good guys are the amputees. Like, the two amputees are the (laughs) only people in the whole fucking show who you feel any sort of way. And the one guy who ended up leaving... With the long... the long blonde hair, Eric, the guy yeah. that you're, the guy that at the very end is so hammered. Yeah, when they're yeah. interviewing him, and he's on the outside. Yeah, yeah well, that's he's really sad. He misses the cats that uh, that um, can I ask, Joe can killed. I ask, can I ask one thing? Did you guys know that the seven alligators that were burnt up in the in what the, the fuck fire, are you talking about? <laughs> those were those were alligators from so Joe Exotic Studio blew up while he was out of town. Yeah, and conveniently out of town. Adjacent Why do you have a studio. music studio? Why do you have a music studio? No, he, no, he, he, had, he had a video studio. He, video. Oh. he had his own channel, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> but there was seven alligators, and those were Michael Jackson's alligators. I don't know if you guys knew that. But they were just recently taken from Neverland Ranch and brought there, and then they got burnt up. Now, this thing blew up because there was a whole... Joe Exotic, uh, Wanye, he taped everything. And when you do shitty things in your life, and you tape everything in your life, there's a lot of stuff that could incriminate you into certain different things. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. He went into his lawyer's office and somehow taped them, basically, you know, wink, wink, nod, nod. Maybe you should get rid of all that stuff. And so conveniently, while he was out of town, his studio blew up and caught on fire and destroyed how everything that he had. That happening? So we think, I, I believe that I believe, I believe Joe did that. Yeah. I believe there's, and, but the guy walking away, I don't believe was like I. I don't think it was that producer, that other one. No, but I do believe that Joe definitely had something to do with his thing being fucking burnt down. Yeah, because there was there was so much incriminating evidence there. Yeah, these are, like the thing that was amazing to me is that all of these people are basically Gary V of shady doings. They're just recording nonstop. Yeah, they're they, the the content that they were producing was just on mass. Yeah, but nobody ends up like, like. Is anybody better off today than they were before in this scenario? Because I don't know where Carol's at, but after this documentary, her life's got to be upside down. Everybody, all anybody talks about is that she killed her husband. Well, right? and she's a sociopath. Even when she was talking about it, she had zero emotion about where her husband was. Zero. And except did- for that nervous laughter. She changed well, yeah, her and, fucking and- will, and to add in the part about if he disappears, she still gets everything. Like. And then yeah. he disappears a few weeks later. Like, are you fucked? Well, and what about her alibi where she went out to do something in the middle of the night and then her car broke down and conveniently ran into her brother who's in law enforcement, who she claims she's like estranged from, but actually isn't like it was so fucked. Like all this weird stuff happened on that night of his disappearance, like uh, by her, like her actions. that just, it's, it's, Obviously, I have no evidence, but it's so fucking incriminating. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't have any evidence yet? I've got no evidence, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive down to Florida and get to the bottom <laughs> like, of it. Obviously, I personally do not have evidence of a TV show I watch. But, yeah, I can't I am looking at, uh, I'm looking at Big Cat Rescue's website right now, and Ooh. there is no message about Tiger King anywhere, just a lot of updates on what's going on during the current COVID-19 pandemic. Good, good. That's yeah, what that it should great. be doing. Because even if it's about the Tigers, it's still about social distancing. So, right. one day, Joe Exotic went down for murder for a murder for hire scheme to murder Carol ha- <laughs> Baskin. And then a bunch of uh, other cases got lumped in with it around killing Tigers. So, he's in prison. And so, everyone turned on him, even though the most evil guy 
who on my list would be Jeff Lowe, who sold him down the river to protect himself. But apparently, there's still a bigger investigation where Jeff could go down. Jeff Lowe looks like an extra from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, there's no way Joe doesn't see the, or Jeff doesn't see the inside of a fucking jail cell in his life. Yeah, he is a piece this. of shit. Like, um, that guy's going to jail. It's just a matter of time. Wanya, if you need, if you want to watch one scene on who Jeff Lowe is, it's probably the last one where he sits with his pregnant wife and openly talks about the nanny they hired and how he can't wait to fuck her. <laughs> yeah, and the wife's just like, ah, because, whatever. Because <laughs> Jeff Lowe, just like everybody else that's into big cats, is a sexual deviant and basically would take tiger cubs to Las Vegas, put them in suitcases, take them up to rooms, and then have young people that were you know, really good looking, come up there, pet them, and then bang them. What? And his yeah, wife you would got just baby like t- sit there. If you, know, you got baby tigers, it is. Yeah, she would too. Yeah. Baby tigers are a great way to pick up chicks, it seems. Well, that's yeah, what they're saying. Jeff, Lowe, it, Jeff, Jeff said Lowe, that. Jeff he had that like quote. sinister laugh after. You know, yeah. you know what they are? Bag milk? You know what they are? Bag milk? They're cucks. They are. They're, 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 they're definitely, they're definitely I cucks. I fucking learned to term and used it. Now it's mine forever. Yeah, so, so that was Tiger King. Yeah, yeah so that was Tiger King. <laughs> like, there's, uh, yeah, wow. We you got to watch it. Just, out, just of 10, to, out of 10, what's the score? Uh, My overall score is going to be an 8, and most of that is on captivity. The fact that it it was so captivating, yeah. I had to watch it quickly. Everybody's talking about it, which is a lot to do with the current state of where we are. Um, but I do believe, I've seen things like this that have come that have basically just been like a sensation for a couple weeks. But this one, I know we're all stuck in isolation. It's just, it's more intense than the rest where like, even my parents are asking me about Tiger King and my parents don't usually, <laughs> don't usually get into shit like this, but like, you know, so I have to say that it's an eight. I, I really, really like the way the guy filmed the whole thing. I do believe it could have been one less, um, but yeah, I'm an eight. Yeah, the layers like it, 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 it. The thing that's dumbfounding, and the reason why it's it's the car crash that your M Chuck mentions is that you you just when you think there couldn't be another layer added, there's another one, and then another one, and then another one. So that so it's captivating because of that. So I would say it's probably a real life seven and a captivity nine. <laughs> Bagno. Yeah. I loved it. I mean, I love weirdos. I love anything with just strange conspiracies like this. I was hooked. I if if I could have crushed the entire series in a day, I probably would have. Um, I'm gonna go give it a hard eight because it was it had everything I wanted. It had drama. It had sociopaths. It had weirdos. It had tigers. It had hilarious songs and music videos. It was everything that I needed from a quarantine period docuseries. I'm giving it a hard eight. Yeah, it was super easy to follow, too. Like, where they stopped each episode and where they began the next one. Hold on, you say really, began? Really, well, <laughs> that? Yeah, he did. He did. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you I don't get it. Um, own it. <laughs> but, but, like, it was easy to follow. There was never one time where you were like, hey, wait a minute. So this person, like... It was very, very well laid out. It For me, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10, but I almost want to go lower because the hype around it had me thinking it was going to be a 10 out of 10. Like, I thought this was going to be the craziest fucking thing I've ever watched or the best thing I've ever watched in my life. It was the craziest thing I've ever watched in my life, but it, but it wasn't up there in terms of quality. It was just like, there's so much fucked up shit going on that you're like, well, I need to keep watching this because everyone in this is so fucked up. Um, there was really no protagonist which is something I always look for. Like I, I would have liked there to be like a good redemption story coming out of all this, but there isn't. They're just all the main characters are shit bags who deserve to be in prison. So I'm giving it a seven. <laughs> people need to watch it. I think people should watch it, but I would never be like, oh, I should go watch it again because it was that good. And it could have oh, been an hour one, and a half shorter. One, one more thing. So where it ends off is Joe's in jail and he's now partnered up with PETA who, who he was public enemy number one with because he wants to try and take down everyone in this industry. 
Uh, Joe Exotic has also filed a $94 million lawsuit against everybody involved with the production for making him look bad. What the fuck? He signed over? Did, did he not hire these people to make most of the documentary? said the series is full of lies and innuendo. Salacious and sensational as possible to draw viewers. Bro, he was sensational as possible. <laughs> that was his whole life. That <laughs> sentence sums up his entire being. And most importantly, he had a great haircut. And I think that those are going to be the look of quarantine cuts. I think, oh, yeah. the, I think the Joe Exotic is going to come out in a big way in 2020. Joe it, Exotic is going to be the number one Halloween costume for sure. I was, I was sure. just going to say, if this would have dropped in like August or September, Joe Exotic would have been the number one Halloween costume on the planet. Without a doubt. Now, you know yeah. me, your rem talk. As long as people are driving while drunk, I'm happy. Yeah. I'm going to give this a go. It's cleared the threshold. What the hell is going on? You, you have to <laughs> watch to need to watch. Now we need, I need to watch. Nope. See you, Chalmers. Start when we're done the show today. It will be interesting uh, to hear your feedback and takes on it. Yeah, I, it. I sat the other night while I was doing something for like 10 minutes on the screen of Game of Thrones. And I was going to start watching. And I got as far as the first like screen on Netflix of it, or HBO or whatever it's on. I was oh. also going to watch Game of Thrones, but then I got really heavy into 90 Day Fiance instead. Oh, fuck. Well, now I'm going to flip the script. Do yourself a goddamn flip favor and watch Game of Thrones for fuck's sake. I've never but seen it and I have no interest it. in it. it. You gotta let it happen, man. Let it happen. It's good. Oh, I know it's good. I didn't I did not watch it because I don't think it's good. I saved it when I need to be distracted. Well, all the hey, here. I gotta go I gotta go into a meeting right now, so I'm gonna say goodbye to all of you. I really wish you would have watched Tiger King, Wanye. Well I'm gonna That's watch really it. It's really disappointing to me. We literally you asked me to comment on shit on Instagram, and I, I asked you to watch a damn show. Oh, my God. You asked me to watch a six-part documentary, and that's equivalent <laughs> to leave a comment? I promise you could have watched it. If you would have watched the very first one, it would have you would have stayed up that whole night. I guarantee it. And you could, you that night, to that night is tonight. That is the night that you're describing my uh, day. Day late. <laughs> <laughs> Guess we'll talk about it Thursday then, huh? Jeez. Yeah. Speaking, of, speaking of social content, how about me getting ripped for how I eat a banana? Oh, yeah. Because it's absolutely wrong. I can't believe you didn't. You, you even you thought took, that was going to go any other way. You took a lot of shit for that. Yeah, like there was. It, I think I think it was like ninety five percent against. Psychopath was one was one that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder anyway. how Joe Exotic eats a banana. No. Oh. That's a probably not as crazy as you. He probably makes the straight guy chew it up and then spit it into his mouth like a bird. Like a popsicle? Hey, go to your fucking meeting. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, out of here, Thomas. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're lingering. God. <laughs> but I, what I love is my cousin, Mayor Moose, on Instagram, showed how they do it down in the Flatlands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Starting her at the tip of the south. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. So what do we got for sports or M. Chuck? Humor me. Um, what do we have for sports? Um, honestly, not a lot. Like, there's a thing going around about how the NHL has asked teams for August availabilities. Um, I, again, as the days go on, I've sort of just accepted the fact that this season's done. Um, the NHL probably wouldn't announce that till June, but I, I'm having a hard time being optimistic. Just the way society's going, like, I don't think we'll get to a point where you can put 18,000 people in an arena come July. And I, I really don't think the NHL is going to want to bring it back and then risk, like, I, I've thrown this out there before. What if they decide, okay, in July we're starting the playoffs with no fans, no fans at all. And then we get to halfway through round two and some player on the Colorado Avalanche tests positive for it. He catches it somewhere, whatever, and they need to shut it all down again. Like, I just don't think the NHL is going to want to take that risk. Um, I bet you... Uh, I would I would put money on at some point in June. There's an announcement saying the NHL season's over, and they're going to do their best to start in October or November the next regular season. I just there, there's no news coming on it right now. There's no news in society that leads me to believe we're going to be back to normal in three months. So I, that's where I'm at. Remember my idea. I'm, I'm Remember my idea to put everyone in one town and play the whole league out of one town. Yeah, yeah it's going to be the the U.S. teams that are fucked. 
Let's put them up in the Northwest Territories. Let's yeah, build man. an put arena. Everybody in Greenland. Well, let's just yeah, make the NHL Canadian teams. That's right. Yeah, that's how they're going to end the the dry spell of Canadian teams not winning the cup. They're just going to be like, you know what? The only teams who get in are Canadian teams. There you go. How dare you? So in an all-Canadian Stanley Cup playoff. The Oilers are the favorites. Who, who would be the who would they play in the final? Toronto. Winnipeg? Toronto? You think so? Probably. I don't think they're gritty enough to make play playoff hockey, but I guess maybe in this <laughs> this version of playoffs it's not who would playoff they, hockey. Who would they have to beat in the East? They would have to beat Ottawa and then Montreal, and they would be in the Stanley what, Cup final in this scenario. So, which I guess here's the here's the thing: where does Winnipeg fall? Is, are they a Western team or an Eastern team in this situation? If you were to actually do this and do like a seven team Canadian thing, you would probably have to have a round robin where everyone plays everyone once, and then you get like two teams get a buy. The next four teams have to play each other, and then one team's eliminated or something. Oh, so like, like the Briar. Yeah, and then you bring in the old CFL crossover. What about the page system? Oh, I'd be. I'm always down for a good page playoff game. Yes, all the intensity of stakes well. on the line with no one getting eliminated. It's tremendous. But that'd be great if <laughs> it got to a point where Canada is like borderline healthy enough and is like, hey, we can put like five thousand people in arenas and do these games. And they just did like a Canadian championship. Everyone plays. Well, I, I everyone. don't think anybody. Nobody would be mad if sport came back with no fans at this point. I right. think I, I think agree. the players might. I don't uh, think so, man. I think a taste of normal would be awesome. Yeah. But did you and they can get paid too, right? Yeah, but I like I read the agreement that Major League Baseball and that and their players association came to. And basically in that agreement, the MLBPA said we'll maybe come back in July, but you need to have fans. And if there's not gonna be fans, like they basically need to work on a new agreement because they don't want to play if there's no one in the seats. I don't know mm-hmm. if I believe I remember that, but prior prior to the 2004 draft, the NHLPA sent a like informal survey out asking players how long they could go without getting paychecks. And some people were like, "I never need to get paid again in my life. I'm a trillionaire. I'm Mike Medano or whatever." But a lot of players were like, "If I'm not getting paid for one season, I'm in huge trouble." But they are getting paid. They are, the NHL already said they're going to pay them through the rest of the regular season, and that's the rest of their checks. Right. So that would mean what? No refunds on tickets to anybody. That would until the- they cancel the season. That's the thing, right? So yeah. like, and they're they're going to collect the revenue in lieu of every game on TV. They're still getting the ad revenue and shit. No, no. the teams are taking hits, not the players. So the teams are absorbing all the payroll with no revenues associated. Pretty much, yep. Because well, there was never any. You never got paid. Players don't get paid their salary in the playoffs, right? So, but like in March and April and shit. Yeah. So the NHL already told the PA that they're going to pay them through the rest of the regular season, and that's been done. So yeah, now the NHL teams are basically taking taking hits right now, and it's going to come through in the salary cap. I was chatting with uh, Hart from Puckpedia today, and and we were uh, he he was on TSN twelve sixty, and we were just kind of chatting about the way things would go, and more or less the players are going to have to ignore escrow, I believe. And the NHL is going to have to like artificially inflate the salary cap. Like even though they don't have the money to do it, there's going to have to the league's going to have to nut up and and put money forward here to kind of keep the league going into next season. Yeah, or every team isn't going to be compliant because the cap's going to drop. Let I, me ask you this, your M. Chuck. Yeah. Do you think the NHL? Let's pretend the NHL doesn't come back until January, right? Okay. Is there still 31 teams in the league at that point? 100,000 percent. I don't have the slightest doubt about that. The NHL would do everything in its power, and they would make sure that they spread the wealth around to keep it afloat. Maybe Quebec finally gets their chance. You can see weird shit happening like that, right? Where all of a sudden, like the guy in Florida, I remember in an 08 financial crisis, this dude owned the Coyotes, Jerry Moyes. And he owned the uh, largest trucking company in the United States. That company went out of business. And he just gave the keys back proverbially to Batman. was like, here's your team, man. Like, my giant-ass business that allowed me to have an NHL team as, like, a fun thing just failed. So, I don't know. Like, it would be weird if, like, a, like, what if an owner of an NHL team was like, my real business is fucked. Here you go. Take your team back. Quebec yeah, could get it. Too. They wouldn't just disappear. And I, the Violas in Florida are fucking wealthy. Like they're one of the no, 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 no. I'm just, as an example, like Frank like, well, Viola, former Minnesota Twins pitcher. I have no idea. 
Viola's. Okay. I just know they're uh, – Vinny Viola is their owner. That's his first name. I'm, I'm using that as an example, Graham, but, like, people who yeah. own giant businesses own sports teams, mm-hmm. and if something like this craziness that's going on continues, big companies will shut, right? Yeah, but I think it, it would just be like what happened in 08 then with the Coyotes where – the Florida owners are just like, or whoever, Carolina's weird-ass owner, Dundon, would just like give the keys to the NHL and be like, I'm out, sell it if you can. And that's how, and that, what I'm saying is that's how Quebec could end up having a team really quickly, right? Yeah, Something but... fucking weird happens, and yeah. all of a sudden they're like, shit, the guy in Florida doesn't, or whoever, whichever market you pick this week, because a lot of NHL teams in the shittier markets don't make money. And I could see an owner being like, fuck it, I'm out. And then Quebec being like, we're still in. And then mm-hmm. they get a team and it'd be in, it could get interesting as well. A big reason why, like the Canadian bringing a team to Canada is considered unsustainable, is because of the dollar, right? So if if the dollar gets closer together, then maybe that changes things from a Quebec City perspective. But I don't know. What about a league? What about a league like the CFL? Right? Like if they lose a season, that that would be bad news, would it not? Yeah, man. That actually that worries me. Like out of every sports league, is like. Fuck! If the CFL needs to go down to eight games, even if they need to just need to go down to eight games for a season, they could be like big time fucked. Like, how Why? can the Argo? How can the Argos, who barely stay afloat when there is a season, go for another twelve months without any football related revenue, without that massive TV contract from TSN? That would be the CFL would be the one league where I'm like, or and obviously the XFL to an extent. Where I'd be like, oh shit, things could like really, really change on like a permanent basis if uh, if they can't get their season down. But mm. crazy. So, so yeah, that's all the sports stuff that's going on right now. the uh, The Olympics have been announced for uh, end of July in 2021. If anyone cares about that, nope. Well, it's good. I'm a I'm an Olympics man, so I'm, yeah. I'm glad that uh, we don't have to wait an, a full Olympiad. Uh, for the next Olympics, so I'm happy with it. Um, I mean, the continuity of the Olympics. There have been cancellations and things being moved before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, does the next Olympics happen three years after that or four years yeah, after that? three. They'll get back to their regular mm-hmm. rhythm. Mm-hmm. Um, before we uh, before we wrap up here, need to give some shout-outs to our sponsors. Obviously, JAPA is up there doing their absolute best to keep going through a tough time given support for everyone they are the underdogs in the big machinery business and we love them for it and also we need to give some love to oodle noodle 13 award-winning locations in edmonton and citywide delivery with skip the dishes or head to oodlenoodle.ca you can get a 15 percent discount if you pick up your order in store shout out to japa lots of love to oodle noodle as well um, you guys at Oodle Noodle have been doing some great things with that. Uh, was it the mustard seed you were kind of uh, helping out? Yeah, well, Brownlee's obviously one of yeah. our our homeboys of the nation, and he's uh, heavily involved with the mustard seed. So the 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 beauty of Oodle Noodle is we've got our own food production facility. So we that's run by our founder Sonny. So we asked Sonny if we could whip up some noodles and sauces to donate, and he said no problem. So we donated on Friday. We donated three hundred pounds of noodles and sauces to each uh, of the mustard seed and food bank, which depending how they portion could feed up to like six, easily 600 people a, a, a place if they want. Dude, or that's if they, so good, man. That's such a good thing to do. Good job. Oh, it's good. Sonny obviously was, was more than happy to do it. So we got in the, the oodle noodle van on Friday and went around. So I think, uh, you know, if, if we're still able to stay open for business during this time and do food delivery, I think we'll, uh, keep making donations like this around the city uh when we can just because shit's crazy and there's a lot of people there that uh need some help so that's the least impact, we can do dude. 600 people's meals is a very very big impact yeah it's crazy when i told the mustard seed how much it could feed they're just like holy shit okay thank you because we're just like oh they just opened up like 300 beds and then like the yeah. kinsmen and yeah, stuff man. like that. So like it's That's like uh, three dinners at Kinsman, three nights in a row for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll uh we're gonna try to do this in uh with a de- decent frequency uh for these people. And uh so it's okay, man, good for you. Yeah, that, that you know what? good for everyone. I'll tell you this, Oodle Noodle, you sponsor a podcast I listen to called Real Life. You're good in the community and you're delicious. I might give you a try one day. Well, I'm actually do. ordering. Uh, I'm actually ordering nudes tonight. I haven't had a hot box in a while, so I'm looking forward to it. Nice. 
Um, if people want nation beer, what are the directions on how they can get nation beer? Uh, it's on the, you have to purchase it through the dog Island website. Uh, we've got the link. Maybe we should change the link on the nation real life bio to it for a little bit, if we don't mind. Yeah. Um, and we can order directly through. So basically it's only the Edmonton area that we can, uh, deliver to right now. So any order that comes in, doesn't matter if it's one, four pack or a million four packs. It's free delivery. Uh, uh, so it will be myself and sales guy, Jared, driving around in the nation truck uh, doing deliveries. So we look forward to uh, seeing you. Uh, drunk yeah, would so- you like me to make some memes encouraging drunk driving? Please don't. Okay. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> They're there if you need them. Uh, Worry some that you already have them made, but all right. <laughs> Um, okay, so we got Nation Beer. We gave love to Jappa, who we absolutely love. Check them out on Instagram as well. Maybe we should bring some Nation Beer to Jappa. Um, can you bring Nation Beer out to St. Albert? Yes, we already discussed that. That was on my notes. I needed to make sure. Um, what, what else is on uh, Bag Milk? What's the content looking like this week? We have got a lot of content going up every day. We are looking back at the past. Yesterday, we were looking at a couple of things that some Oilers fans didn't remember, including when. The Oilers did trade for Danny Heatley. Oh, people uh, forgotten. And then the DVD. it was the if DVD. People forgotten that already? People had forgotten about oh it. Oh, my God, people. People are looking back. We looked at uh, a little bit of expansion draft talk, what that means for a guy like re-signing Ryan Nugent Hopkins or maybe Let Tyler Benson. You. Let me stop you for one second. Of course. Remember the $2 million Wu-Tang album that Martin Scarelli guy bought? Absolutely. The Oilers equivalent, Jay, I propose to you, oh. is the DVD for Danny Heaton. Yes. The equivalent of the $2 million album is somebody needs to pay $2 million to see the DVD about Edmonton. If there's ever a time to release at Oilers, it's now. <laughs> it's right now. Like, you could charge everyone 5 bucks on Sean Demand to rent and watch that, and they would. Like, Absolutely. Hi, I'm Patrick LaFord. You should come to Bonnie Dune Mall, where we have over 30 options in a food court. <laughs> Can you imagine if the Oilers were like, hey, we have this unreleased season of oil change from like 2013 that we'll just let you guys watch right now? That'd be Unreal. awesome. Unreal. And today in the What Would You Do Wednesday, Monday edition, we are looking at <laughs> what Oilers jersey from throughout team history would you bring back into the rotation? My personal vote goes to the Todd McFarlane super sperm guy. One million percent. One million percent. I was about to it say it is a you, sharp looking uni. I was going to say if you vote the McFarlane one, you're not a real Oilers fan. They have the best logo in sports, and I think it is the only logo they should wear, and it's their traditional one. So if I could bring back any jersey, obviously it's the royal blue. That's the one they won all their cups in. That's the one I'd want them to win their cups in moving forward. I think I'd they should just like wear those sort of, in general. I'd also like some sort of weird version of when the oil first went to copper and blue. And they got the renovations done to Rogers Place, or Rexall Place. I remember I was in, like, elementary. And we went in there. And, like, I didn't like the guy in the arm. I didn't like the red around the collar, like, around the logo. That kind of looked whack. But that copper and blue era had some pretty dope gear. If they got mm-hmm. rid of the red, that'd be interesting, actually. So we're looking at that Wanye. That was about from anywhere around 96 to 2007 that those were in circulation. Yeah, right in the beginning there. I remember they were dope when they came I want the Reebok then, uh, era pajama ones. Yep, that's 2008 to about the 2011. Piping, with the brown piping all through them? Yeah. Yep. God, were those awful. They were terrible. And then we went, they, the others went back to the roots, the blue and orange. Um, that was in 2008. They put those back on. And then they moved to the playoff orange in 2015. And then now they're at the orange that we are at currently. All right, there's all your content that you can find on OilersNation.com. Uh, guys, thanks for doing another real-life podcast, uh, episode 167. We'll talk again on Thursday because we're doing this twice a week now. Sounds good, guys. See you. Talk to you then. Peace. I'm going to watch that Tiger show. You fucking better. All right. Great show. Great job on making it through the entire hour of the real-life podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from.